I want you to pay attention. When we were originally told, and in this video you're going to hear them, they plant the first seed that this was a, a jet fuel fireball that came down the elevator shaft. And there's plants in here. Any fire I've been into that's consumed the entire room, you have a fireball coming, we don't get fireballs, but when, when you have that type of thing happen, you're going to see some wilting of the plant. That probably, they won't even be there anymore. <laughs> first chief into the building. So look at the damage. It's right the away, the uniform. A guy from the Port Authority told them the damage is somewhere above the 78th floor. Look at the ceiling, perfectly white, and wall is white. Around. Plant from tax. Something had happened right there in the lobby. Windows, irregular damage. You just saw just that. All the lobby. All the lobby. And look at the lobby. The lobby looked like the plane hit the lobby. Look at the elevator cars in the show. They figure out the flaming jet fuel had shot straight down the elevator shaft. All of this damage was done already. Elevator cars attacked. People was all over the place. Elevator cars. So we knew it was going to be worse. We provide the scientific forensic evidence found at the crime scene, the eyewitness testimony, and what investigations should have been done. Building 7 on the left. Is there any similarities? <laughs> now, at first we heard that there's massive structural damage to the south side of this building. Well, were that the case, we would expect this building to fall over toward its area that's damaged. Uh, but NIST pulls that uh, now and they say, was it not a significant factor at all? And in addition, they say that the diesel fuel lines, which were run through uh, from the fifth floor where the diesel generators were, th that was not a factor at all in the collapse of this building. Uh, it's a, a series of explosions racing almost as fast as the debris falling at free fall speed. This is free fall acceleration. For structural engineers, what really gives this away is Building 7. I think it, it's a classic case of uh, what looks like controlled demolition. And no matter how you look at it, in fact, it, it's, it's just makes it, it's, it's just too obvious. He worked on major projects such as the Seattle Kingdom, Three Rivers Stadium, Philadelphia Naval Hospital, Keyspan Gas Holders, in New York, among others. His work is published in the book, Implosion. And Mr. Tom Sullivan. First, you have to weaken the building. And that's after a, a, a studies are done by structural engineers to explain exactly how the building was built in the first place. At that point, staircases are cut uh, at intervals. Firewalls are removed. Uh, elevator shafts are, are cut, including the rails and the elevator cars removed. Uh, then all the support columns on the load floors uh, are cut with a torch. And uh, that essentially removes about 20% of their strength. And even with all that compromising and weakening, the building is still safe to enter. We keep working in it. Film crews and camera uh, crews come in and interview. So the story that just a few column failures can cause a synchronized global collapse, I gotta tell you, well, that's just nonsense. Well, my name is Tom Sullivan. I uh, worked for, uh, I'm a, uh, ex was a former explosive uh, technician for uh, controlled demolition. Uh, and it was worked for them for a couple of uh, years. Uh, and I have to say that I don't represent CDI today. I'm retired. And what I do, uh, uh, what I do say is based on my experience and my training that I received at CDI. And uh, I enjoyed uh, having to work for the best in the world. It just doesn't get it doesn't get more clear yeah. than, than, than that. And so that's my, my argument with it, or when you start talking to people, is, is focus on seven. 
because once you see seven, then there's reasonable doubt that the rest of the story is not the same. Yes, well, seven is, seven is crystal clear. Yeah. I mean, nobody, yeah. absolutely nobody yeah. can deny that that was not explosive demolition. Like I said on, on stage, I knew about this from day one. And I and, and it's been frustrating for me because I work for CDI. I know what I'm talking about. And I was in a unusual, it's, uh, you know, I could, I could, I would tell people and I said, I know what I'm talking about and there's a reasonable doubt and let me tell you why. And people would glaze over and walk away, think I'm a conspiracy theory and it was just very, very frustrating. So, and like a lot of people, I thought, well, eventually this is going to come out. And. Were you talking about that within like the CDI group while you were there? Uh, no, because because that was about the time that was about the time that uh, um, I left CDI okay. and also uh, their business, as all the controlled demolition people, business dropped considerably uh, for about a year or so because it just everybody was so sensitive right, to having sure. to having a building imploded in their in their town because they thought terrorists were coming. So. Basically, their business took a real drop. So anyhow, so so I, I thought that very much that people would um, eventually come to realize this, and I, you know, I just didn't know how to. There wasn't really groups like uh, AE911 out there. I mean, there were some people doing putting information together from film clips uh, and, and so collaborate, you know, so, so collateral information. Right. But nobody doing really hard science, uh, and there wasn't really anything to join. Much like when when Richard said. You know, a couple right. years ago, there wasn't anything for him to join. Well, there wasn't anything for me. And uh, a friend of mine sent me, uh, on my birthday, just this year, sent me a DVD from uh, 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 AE 911. Okay. I looked at it and I said, man, these guys, now, I, I mean, they have structure, they have purpose, they have momentum, right. and they have a good background of experts and, and science to go with this. It's, we're just not looking at what people might say. Not that that's not important. Right. Don't get me wrong. But you need sort of the one-two punch of an argument. So I uh, joined them. I, I called them up and said, I'll sign the petition. And I said, you know, what I did. And they thought I could be helpful. And that's why I'm here today. Sweet. Well, I want to thank you, Tom. You're quite welcome. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Yes. If you think about an elevator shaft, it's there's an elevator car in there. And in that car, those doors, when it's, when, when it's in between floors, those doors are closed. So in all those elevator shafts in the World Trade Center, there's multiple banks, and they went to different levels. So you have some mid-stops, you have some full shaft, you have some go down in the basement. There's just multiple banks of elevators. So not not all of these elevator shafts go all the way down to the lobby. Yeah, Several of those quotes were not during the building collapse. They were talking about they were inside the building reporting.